The Wolf of Wall Street. So The Wolf of Wall Street is directed by Martin Scorsese. It stars Leonardo DiCaprio. And it's Scorsese telling a story about this guy who works Wall Street and then builds his own shady ass company and does stock trading, makes millions of dollars. Not all of it legal, of course, and gives us an entertaining ass movie. That's three hours long. And like in Gilligan's Island, this is a three hour tour filled with twists, turns, and crashes. And some really good writing. First of all, Leonardo DiCaprio in the leading role kills it in this movie. This dude, like like I've always said, it's one of the best actors in the business. He gets snubbed for an Oscar every year, killed it in Django Unchained, kills it in this movie. Will he get nominated? I don't know. Will he win? I have no idea. Does it matter? Not at all, because he is still badass in this movie, and that's what matters. He plays a silver-tongued devil who's just really good at this industry because he is good at speaking. Anytime DiCaprio has a microphone and a crowd, take notes. You just want to listen and be like, America, America, fuck yeah, America, fuck yeah, America, America, this is awesome. This is why a lot of countries hate America, but this is why I I love it, America. He's so energetic, you feel energized. You just like his ambition. You're like, you know what? This is great seeing your empire grow. It's bad, he's a dick, he's an asshole for sure. But he's so ambitious, you can't help but be on board with his endeavor. You know Gordon Gecko's greed is good monologue in Wall Street? DiCaprio has a few monologues in The Wolf of Wall Street that are every bit as good. The supporting actors were awesome also. I mean, Jonah Hill was great in this movie. Jonah Hill's become like the new DiCaprio, kind of. Like DiCaprio, he was that guy that sprung on the scene, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, he's good, I, whatever. And now you're like, this dude's a force to be reckoned with. He's a great actor. Seriously, Jonah Hill was hilarious. DiCaprio was hilarious. This movie is really funny in that really misogynistic kind of way almost. In that American psycho Wall Street kind of way. DiCaprio even makes the point in this movie where he's like, I live this lavish life and make sure my troops see it because I want them to aspire to have the life I have. It drives them. In that same sense, this movie is doing the same to you. You're watching it and you're like, yeah, ambition. You know what? Let's uh, let's get a business plan together. Let's be like that. Martin Scorsese has given us the most relevant thing for the economy in the past decade. This movie is gratuitous for sure. I mean, the second scene you see in the movie is DiCaprio blowing cocaine up a girl's ass. You're like, oh, okay, okay, so it's gonna be like that. So that's what you do with your Titanic money. I get it. Don't worry, I'm sure James Cameron did the same thing. It's almost like Game of Thrones where you're like, it's clearly the most gratuitous thing I've seen in a while, but is it relevant for the story? It actually is. DiCaprio is such a silver-tongued devil, you can argue that he is is like the devil himself. This movie is a big illustration of Babylon, you know? You need to see that where it's like, we can get anything and we have everything. We are left to our own devices, no chains at all. Now the movie is three hours long. The first two thirds of this movie was my favorite part because you know, that's his climb, it's his ambition. You see the drive, it's like social network. I like that movie because I like seeing things get built. The last third of the movie is a little different. Not that it's bad in terms of story arcs, perfectly fine. I'm just saying in terms of personal preference, I like the first two thirds better. I can definitely tell you the movie never seemed like three hours long for sure. I've watched two hour long movies that seem a lot longer than Wolf of Wall Street. This movie constantly kept me entertained for sure. And DiCaprio's voiceover makes you feel like he's talking to you and he's taking you along for this ride. You feel like his apprentice or his protege or something. You feel like you're under the wing of the dragon and it is warm, my friends. This movie is really high octane and really fast to an ADHD degree. It helps you feel the momentum of the life they live for sure. And I like that. But I'm sure there are gonna be people out there who are gonna be like, it's just too jarring and too fast for me. Not gonna lie, in school I was never much of a math person, but I like the practical application of math. You want practical math? Here it is. American Psycho plus Wall Street times Pulp Fiction equals The Wolf of Wall Street. I say Pulp Fiction because of the monologue aspect. This movie's really quotable like Pulp Fiction was. I feel like it's the Pulp Fiction of this decade. And when you combine movies like that, I'm simply trying to tell you one thing, my friends. The Wolf of Wall Street is... awesome-tacular. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I already did that. It's still fun to do. All right, so The Wolf of Wall Street. Have you seen it? And what did you think about it? And if you haven't, what's your favorite Scorsese movie so far? Whatever it is, comment below. Let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.